I thought it was a great game. I would love to see a rematch between these two teams. It's one of the, I think, important things that's being lost in the Oregon-Washington discussion. A lot of focus on Dan Lanning's strategy. A lot of focus on the missed kick at the end of regulation. A lot of focus on the, the greatness of Michael Penix Jr., understandably so. Washington's offense was lights out. Not enough focus, I don't think, on the idea of how easily these two teams could have switched roles on Saturday and how simple it will be for these two teams to simply get back to a position that they would play a rematch. I was on the sideline at the end of the game, and Camden Lewis's kick goes wide right. The Washington fans erupt. There's a groan on the Oregon sideline. There were tears on both sides. It is a rare occasion when you will see players on both sides of the field crying after a game. Michael Penix Jr. had to wipe away tears. His offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, had to wipe away tears after the game. Several Oregon players, I walked over to the visiting locker room outside Husky Stadium. Before they went into the locker room, knelt down and had tears running down their cheeks. Oregon would love another opportunity to get Washington. And I think Washington would probably welcome another opportunity to play in a game like that, specifically if it means that it's a gateway to a college football playoff berth. But as I am looking at these two teams, Kalen DeBoer's Washington team, Dan Lanning's Oregon team, I felt like I was watching Chapter 1 or Episode 1 of a, of a miniseries that we're going to see. It left me wanting more. I wanted to see another quarter of football with these two teams. I wanted to see them go back and forth. I want to see Penix, who was cramping up during the game and throwing touchdown passes, and Bo Nix, who was almost perfect in playing opposite Penix at the quarterback position. I want to see more of that. I would love to see a rematch in Las Vegas. What will it take? Well, Washington's got a mulligan. Washington can afford to lose a game and still get to Vegas. That's what they really want on Saturday. And the Oregon Ducks, they've got to be perfect. They've got to go and beat Washington State this week. They've got to go to Utah and win. They're going to have to, down the stretch, play an Oregon State team in a game that I think is going to be really difficult. And, oh, before that, they're going to have to play USC at home. And Oregon's going to have to navigate that without a loss to have a legitimate shot, straight-faced, to argue that they belong in Las Vegas. Like, you know, football's not war. It's not. We always use euphemisms and Idioms that remind us of war. It's a long bomb. It's do or die. It's really not. But these football teams put on an amazing display of college football on Saturday. And from a fan standpoint or a journalist standpoint, I was sitting back going, yes, this is everything that's right in college football. It's two quarterbacks who came back to their respective teams instead of turning pro because of name image likeness, probably. It's coaches, two coaches who have prepared their teams for this culminating moment. They're meeting on the field. And in large part, they played damn near 60 minutes even. And we're left at the end quibbling over strategy decisions and third downs and fourth downs. But, I, you know, as I'm walking off the field, I'm going, rematch. I would like to see more of this. I won't complain if these two teams make it to Las Vegas and play for the Pac-12 championship. I really won't.